Hello guys and welcome back to 737 DIY Sim. In this episode, I'm hoping to build the pedestal unit that sits in the base of the cockpit there. The pedestal you see in front of me here was kindly given to me by a friend here in Malaysia and all I've got to do is tighten all the screws up, rebuild it and put this down quietly so it doesn't get picked up on the camera, I'm learning, and fit all the decals and hardware as required. Let's do that first before we start fitting all of the pedestal panels to the unit and make sure they actually fit in this new unit. These panels came from Cockpit Sim Parts Co.uk and not only do they look fantastic, but they absolutely fit perfectly. Really pleased with how that looks. I think now it's time to start bolting them all down, put them into position. That way I can lift each panel out individually and build it and slot it back in. Now, you can probably see that this is my very first prototype radio panel and the idea was that everything just connects to this and there's a few wires, three or four wires that come from this down to the Arduino. It looks quite busy and realistically too much to fit on one panel. So I found a better way and that's to follow what, very similar to what happens at work. Um, we just had a Jupiter intercom system fitted and what they use is a patch panel. The Mac 7219 boards, here they come. So you remove the displays from there and then you slide the 7219 into the patch panel. And that just leaves a 40 pin connector, which then goes directly to any of the displays. Tidies the wiring up tenfold and hopefully works a lot better. Of course, the other solution would be just to get PCBs made. Haven't got to that stage yet. I want to get the build done and then we'll come back and revise every part that I can make better and simpler for you guys to follow along. Until then, it's just wiring and patch panels. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of wiring in this unit. As I learned from the aft overhead, the station boxes here, that is a lot of wiring to connect up to the Arduinos. I think each one pretty much maxes out an Arduino pin pin unit on its own, which is 67, 67 pins now, I think. I decided to fit all the panels using M4 screws to hold them in place. And then if I needed to work on a panel, I could just remove it. That's all the panels installed into the pedestal. Now we're gonna start by making the first VHF radio. Even though I've just installed it, let's take it back off and take it into the workshop to see how we're going to go about this. Now these panels are from Cockpit Sim Parts and as you can see, the colour looks great, the engraving is absolutely perfect and I really like working with them. First thing you have to do is to remove the backing. And all it is it's a bit of plastic on the perspex. I'm going to put the face plate and the back plate together, then insert 
three M4 20 millimeter screws, which I happen to find for the absolute perfect length. Then we've got three M4 nuts to hold the two plates together. To achieve the perfect distance of the PCB that goes on the back, to the back plate, I need a nut, a washer, and then another nut. And that sets the perfect distance for the PCB. With the panels assembled, it's now time to fit the encoder. And on the board in front of me, I can see they're from Prop Wash. Great little dual encoders, very cheap. The only problem is they're a little bit too small for the five millimeter face panels. So when you put them through, you can't get the nut on. To, to solve this, I'm not gonna worry about the PCB. What I'm gonna do is hot glue it straight into position. And it seems to work fine, as you can see on this panel here. It works really well. To help them sit down a bit flatter, I'm also gonna remove this tiny little locating tank and that will allow it to sit flush against the panel. With the encoders prepped, I'm going to put them in, have the wires facing to the outboard of the panel, and then hot glue them in position. Next up is to glue the buttons that go inside the panels, here and here, the transfer button and the COM test button. And I only want to take the plastic off one side of these because in a minute, once I've glued them together, I need to spray them black. The trick is to try and get these centered as best as you can. All I'm going to do is loop a bit of masking tape around on itself that makes two sides, stick it to my piece of wood, then put the buttons face down, and we'll head outside and paint these up. We've still got the protective coating on the backs of the switches still. That's remained on. Outside we go. We can take these off and they should look quite good. So if we take the backing off, that will allow the light to travel through the unit and light the forward facing arrow up. And we just used matte black spray paint to cover the edges. With the buttons complete, let's wire these encoders up, ready for when we build the PCB. What we're going to create now is this encoder loop and the whole purpose of the encoder loop is so we can detach it from the PCB and the PCB will then separate completely from the face panel if we need to change a LED or a display unit. I'll cut the ends of these ribbon cables off like so. Put them in the bin. With these cables with the ends cut off, I'm going to halve them or double them over and then simply slice them. He says that's going to be a bit too thick for my snips. I'm just splaying the wires slightly to make it easier to fit into the connector and to solder to the unit. With these kind of wire strippers, all you do is you put the wire in into the 26 gauge hole, allow the jaws to close at the length that you want to strip off, like so. So we're gonna strip off that much, hopefully. Allow them to open, it pulls the wire off, pulls the insulation off, sorry. You remove the wire, they stay open and they click closed. Once more, there's the jaws closed around the insulation. Squeeze a little bit harder, they stay open, They've pulled the wire off. Now you can go see it just in there. Release, the jaws come open, and actually to remove the wire without damaging it, and they slam shut. Just gonna pre-tin the ends again.
So I've got these cheap eBay crimp tools and these crimps are tiny. I've got big fingers, big hands. And I've got to try and balance the tiny crimp in the first hole. You can just make out the crimp in the tool. I'm going to feed the cable in. And then close it all the way. And it produces quite a tidy crimp. So with the ground wire, it needs to go to both the upper and lower encoders here on the middle pins. So I hope to strip back this black wire to about there and solder it in two locations. Because these wires are so thin in this ribbon cable, we are talking three strands. I'm going to use a bit of hot glue over the top to secure them in place and stop any movement or flex from breaking them. So my plan is to use these prototyping boards for the PCB design. And they're a bit too big, which is actually quite good. Not in lengthwise, but in width. So I'm just going to make them slightly smaller, mark a line, and that's the size we want to cut. With our holes drilled, Hopefully we can test it on this panel and it should slide over the connector, over on the studs and it fits absolutely perfectly. Very happy with that. That's going to go behind like so. The first thing on is going to be the tactile switch. Just marking it out where it's going to go. And hopefully we'll put this into the board here. So with these tactile switches, I need to remove the studs at the back, like so. And then we just slide it in, hopefully. Yes, like so. So that looks good for about the position for the first one. Push that all the way home. Ah, no. I'm using Max 7219 boards. I've removed the digits and put pins in. You'll see that in a bit later on when we do the patch panel. The four digits have gone and I'm using two lots of three. It's another day here in the sim and just returned from work. And in the post came my six digit displays. Now these are gonna save me a lot of time because there are a lot of pins in two lots of three. And when you've got four lots of three, that takes forever. So we can take these out from the board now and put two six digits in. The PCB I've loosely attached with the three attachment nuts. That holds it at the right height away from the unit. Now I'll push the displays against the Perspex fronts at the front. That'll hold them at the exact right height and then simply just got to solder them in position. Reaching down from my bag of parts and we're going to need two 20 pin connectors. And they're going to go on the back side with the cutouts facing up. This is going to be a bit of trial and error. I think they look quite good in this position. So we'll go for it and see what happens. Now 
And there we have both nav panels complete. I was just about to wire them up. Then I thought, do you know what? Let's get all the components mounted in one go. So we'll do the ADF panels next. We'll get all those components fitted onto the boards and then we'll just do a mass wiring. Now with the ADF panels, the encoder and the seven segment displays and the location holes are in the exact same position. Let me just zoom in here a bit, that's better. Now with the ADF panel, the encoder, the seven segment and the transfer button, they're all in the same position, but we do have additional two switches here in the middle for the antenna and the tone. So I'm going to put the PCB on and I have pilot drilled through the front in the center straight through. We need to put two two position switches in there and because these aren't long enough we're going to have to cheat a little bit and unfortunately hot glue them in position as well. For us to be able to do that we also need to enlarge the holes so when the board goes over, it doesn't interfere with the back of the switches. So I think what I'll do first is we'll hot glue two switches in position as a trial. I really would like to try and get this nice and central. So I don't know how this is going to work. I'm going to fill it up and then hopefully push it through. Let's wait for that to dry and see how it turns out. Because if it fails, there's no point continuing. In the meantime, while I wait for that to dry, let's enlarge the hole that that needs to go over and see how it fits. Wow. That looks pretty good. To make sure I get all the wiring correct, and I know that the three digit work, I know that the three digit displays work perfect on this prototype. On this side here, we have the two three digit displays, and on this side, we've got the single six digit display. They're wired up separately, so the two halves represent the two different kinds of seven digit displays. All I've got to do is copy the pin numbers from one side to the other and hook them up. I'm gonna get on with that, Bit of time lapse and hopefully I'll see you in a little while and we'll see how it goes. That's all the seven segment displays wired up. Now let's concentrate on the encoders. Going to use a different color solid wire so we know what each system does. What color should we use for this? Feel purple. Purple for the encoder. Here we have the two radio panels that are now completed. We have the ADF and the VHF nav radios. That's all the buttons connected, all the switches connected, encoder and seven segments. Now that just leaves the LEDs to be connected. First of all, we have to put the boards back together, see where the LEDs need to go, and then start soldering them in. And once again, I'm keeping the cathodes towards the top of the board. Okay, pretty happy with where they're going to go. So, I think we can probably button those up now. So 
So now I'm going to wire these LEDs up. I'm going to do them in sets of three, 12 volts they're going to take. They've got a forward voltage of 3.3 and I want to operate them at about 20 milliamps. So I think that's about a 120 ohm resistor for three LEDs in series. And for the side one, it's only got two LEDs. That's probably going to be around 220 ohms or even up to 330 if you want it a bit dimmer. That guys is the first VHF panel finished and it looks something a bit like that. Let's hope that nothing interferes now when we put the main panel on and see what it looks like. So we need a transfer switch. Put the PCB on. No way. Wow. I actually think that went together. Okay. That's a nice surprise. Put some nuts on and we'll start the next one. So now that the radio panels are built, it's time to build the patch panel. You can see that I've taken the Max 7219 boards, here's a green board, and I've pulled the digits off and inserted the header pins, like so. Now, with these boards with the header pins, they just simply plug into the patch panel, like so. And that means when you find a duff one, or one packs up, you can just simply pull it out and replace it. Just like those two I've shown you, when I built this prototype board, those two refused to work. They just like it heat up and not work at all. Always connected to the bottom are the connections to the Arduino. So I need to make two more of these, one for the ADF radios and one for the VHF nav radios. So now that I've removed all the pins from the board, we now need to fit header pins. And that's where my son Joshy behind me is going to help out. Okay, mate, let's do it. It's really good. I like how you're touching the pin first with the soldering iron and then applying the solder. Joshy had to go out for a second, but he has finished all the 7219 boards. They're all soldered up, ready to go, as you can see on here. I will then prep the female headers now in sizes six and five, ready to attach to the green prototype boards there. I'm just gonna load the female headers into position. And then it's just a matter of pushing the max boards into the prototype board and solder them into place. There's the first two boards mounted. Now for the first 40 pin connector. That's these two boards with all the parts in position on the top half of the board. I'm going to flip them over, put the camera into time lapse and knock these out. And in true Blue Peter style, there's the two patch panels with every connector I require for the two units. There is a slight difference. This one being the nav unit, it's only got a four pin connector at the end. And because the ADF units have got slightly more buttons, this has got a six pin right here. Once again, cue the time lapse, because now I have to wire all these connectors up on the back. And that's going to take quite a bit. A 
after two days of solid soldering and wiring, that's the patch panel and radio is now finished, ready for the pedestal. To tidy everything up, I've had this idea that we'll insert this MDF board into the bottom of the pedestal. And in the time that I've been soldering, the 3D printer has been printing out these plastic cases for the patch panels to sit in. So it tidies everything up like so. Now, if I show you the patch panels from the front, they look nice and tidy. From the back, there's actually quite a lot of wiring involved in the patch panel. And a closer look, you can see that I've used the shielded twisted pair for the data lines of the seven segment displays, which I'm finding helps with reliability and gets rid of the gobbledygook that displays on the seven, dis seven segment displays sometimes when you daisy chain them. Hopefully when we plug these in, I haven't tested them yet because I want to mount everything on these boards and then just talk the ribbon cables up to these and we can test them with the laptop. I've also printed these Arduino mounts from Thingiverse. They're absolutely brilliant. A nice simple way to mount the boards on any project. I should put the link on the website and on the description of this video. Rubbish. Okay, let's try that again. And they do, honestly, just sit in there quite nicely with a couple of screws. Brilliant. We're probably only gonna need one Arduino for mounting the radios. However, I'm gonna mount the other two ready for when we expand into the rest of the pedestal unit. I've got my pedestal scrap bit of MDF in front of me. I've gone inside, got the 10 port USB hub. This is just an Amazon Basics USB 2. That's gonna go on that there kind of position so the cables can come from every side. Then we've got our 3D printed patch bases, which I'm hoping will go quite close together at the front. Something a bit like that. So first up, double-sided tape for the hub. As you can see, that stuff is brilliant as sticking stuff together. I just need to take the excess trim off the sides here and then we can fit them. Line them up. I'm going to pre-drill just so it makes the screws going in a bit easier. That can go into location there, only roughly, because we need to get to the side to solder it. That means that if we put, excuse me, that means now if we put cable mounts along here, we can just mount the cables directly to the boards here from the Arduino, nice and neatly. With the VHF nav patch panel, we now need to fit a three pin connector to the twisted pair cable. I'm gonna go about an inch and a half back from the end and just gently slice around the insulation. It should be okay, we shouldn't go too deep because the shielding should protect the cut and the cables below. Give it a little twist. Normally you can't pull it off because it's on that tight. Try and slice down the length of it. Yeah. Create a little basket about six millimeters from the end. Trim that basket off. Get rid of the excess. Strip the ends, 
Then I'm going to solder the screening. Like so. Then we need an extra bit of wire. Strip one end off, that quarter inch back. And we're going to solder this cable to the shielding and that will make our third cable. Now this cable here, the white one, attached to the shielding, on real aircraft, that would be attached to ground. But to save it for my case, we're gonna use it as a third wire, and I know it works over a three meter distance. So we're basically turning a twisted pair into a, a three core cable, basically. Not ideal, but it does work for this, and we're not working on real aircraft. And then it's going to solder them together. We'll loop that around to around about there. It's a bit too long, I think. So about there. Trim it. There we go. With the crimps done, it's got to put the connector on, making sure I get the, the colours the right way around. Now I'm going to apply some heat to the heat shrink and shrink it down and cover that bare contact. So all that's left to do is plug our newly created connector in to the second board, root it in and terminate it at the other end. Okay guys, I'm gonna crack on. I think I've explained enough of what the procedure is. Let me get this all wired up and I'll get back to you. After three days of solid wiring and soldering, that is the radio panels now complete. It's just a simple task of plugging the 40 pin connectors in and testing the system before we install it into the pedestal. Let's give it a go. I was just about to head inside and realised I need to create the ribbon cables. So at one end we have the 40 pin connector, so I'm using two sets of 20 pin ribbon cables. At one end they're going to be joined by the 40 pin connector and then two 20 pin connectors to the radio panel. And to create the ribbon cables, I'm gonna use my little mini vise right here. And it seems to work quite well. Here's the 40 pin connector. I'm gonna make sure that the nodule is at the top, the little bump. Push the cables through. I want the red stripe to the left. And you hopefully can see that they're just sticking proud of the connector itself. Turn it upside down, put it in my little vise, and then give it a good squeeze until the plaque caps meet. That's it. Put the securing plate in. That's one end done. Now for the 20 pin connectors. Place it through, stick it through a little bit and simply clamp in the voice. In goes the securing clamp, 
And that's it, it's pretty permanent from that point on. And now just repeat for the other eight times. So it's sticking through slightly. You can straighten up the cuts afterwards. One dual ribbon cable. There's our six ribbon cables. Let's get this thing tested. We're back inside. The board is built below me here. You can see to my right, your left, I've got the sim behind me and my main computer in the background. Before we start programming, I've got to put the board in the base of the pedestal. And you can see that the way I got around this was to remove the front of the pedestal panel and support the pedestal panels themselves with a bit of wood tie wrapped to the front. That stops them all dropping down. It also allows me now to put the board into the unit, which we'll do right now. Now that's everything connected. I think the first test we can do is the lighting because that's on a separate circuit. Oh, I hope that comes up on the camera because that's looking really good from here. Before we go any further, I need to load up the software. That'll be ProSim, P3D, and MobiFlight. So the first thing I need to do is enter all the devices onto the MobiFlight software and tell it what is connected to each pin. And that's where keeping a log as we're building along of what device is connected comes in really handy. So you can see that I've entered all the devices onto the MobiFlight software and they're all labeled just the H and then the pin. H being the designation of the card. So I think I'm running about 23 Arduinos now, all labeled A to U, I think it is at the moment. Uh, this just happens to be card H. So the designation is H, and we start off with Hotel 5, which you can see is my first set of seven segment displays on pins five, six, and seven. And you can quite clearly see the number four, which indicates that we've got four boards daisy chained in a row. With all the devices, entered into MobiFlight. Now let's program the first display. We'll use COM1 Active, and that offset comes directly from the FSU IPC documentation, so we don't need to make it up. If you look at the crib sheet, we can see that for the COM1 Active, it is 05 Charlie 4. So over to MobiFlight, board three, and then we need to select the first six digits. Decimal point in point three, then click test. Hurrah, straight in and it works. Bonus, let's do the standby. So for this, what I'm gonna do now is duplicate the row and change it from active to standby. I'm gonna get rid of the copy and we're gonna edit the line. And we can see that the standby is 05 Charlie Charlie. FS you can see. We change the 4 to a Charlie. And then display is board 4. And we'll hit test. And it works. I'll quickly enter the COM2 details and I'll get back to you in a second.
That's the four comp panels entered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the lines. I'm going to hit run. And hopefully everything populates. Everything's populated by the first unit. Now why is that? There we go. Just had to click on it. And there we have our comm radios all ready to go. Now the encoders and all the buttons, they come from my own offset and I need my master offset list. And these are just a set of hex offsets that I think I can use to program the pedestal. These are mine and uh, hopefully they won't cross motionate with any others in the program. As you can see, there's a master list which I put on the website that you can also get details from. Now, rather than you watch me program every single button and every single switch in the radio panels, I'll crack on and do that in the background. I'll put my crib sheets back on the website, so if you do need the offsets or the details to follow, you can just copy that. I'll also put the wiring diagrams on there. It should be really simple to follow along and create exactly what I've created without any hassles. Let's do this. I now think that's everything programmed. All I've got to do is hit run on Mobi Flight. And that's a great start. All six radios have now got the displays working. Let's concentrate on COM1 encoder. That works great. Now push the transfer button. It switches over. Absolutely brilliant. Let's do the nav one. No issues there. Transfer it over. Oh yeah. That transfers. Now over to COM2. NAV1, and finally, ADF2. And that brings us to the end of another episode here in the sim. Six radio panels all up and working, and that just leaves the back half of the pedestal to finish. Once that's done, I'll put the front panel back on and then insert the pedestal into the sim right here. It is actually a very simple thing to create and luckily it's gone really well. Hopefully you'll just be able to follow along with all the crib sheets I put on the website. Until the next episode guys, sim out.